What's going on, Rob? This is Guys, and this video is brought to you by Nelson and Murdoch Attorneys at Law. So Nelson and Murdoch is a general practice law firm located in Hell's Kitchen, New York, and seeking an entry-level litigation attorney with one to three years of litigation experience with a focus and interest in family law. Now their firm culture acknowledges and supports work-life balance while also providing high quality work and commitment to excellence for their clients. And the right candidate will have a drive to build and expand their family law litigation practice with Nelson and Murdoch. So if you're looking to get into family law, make sure you guys check out the link down in the description. But with that said, let's get into it. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and technically I decided to record one of these videos even though I don't really know whether or not you guys actually wanna see it. Uh, but villains we need in the MCU. I wanna talk about Annihilus here, right? Annihilus is a villain we need in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And here's the reason why. So introducing Annihilus will do two things in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The first thing it'll do is actually expand the nature of the MCU and really even the multiverse, kind of give us more of that landscape than we had before. And the second would show just how bad things could get in the universe itself. So here's one thing to understand. Annihilus had been around for a long, long time in Marvel Comics. And then we eventually got the Annihilation event back in 2006. So kind of focusing on the nature of Annihilus for a second, he comes from a place called the Negative Zone. Now this is the expanding of the Marvel Cinematic Universe landscape that I was talking about. So what you have is you have like the multiverse, right? An infinite number of universes that exist out there. But you have some places where only one of them exists across the entirety of the multiverse. So these are places like the Dimension of Manifestations. For those of you guys who don't know what that means, in Marvel Comics, the cosmic entities don't actually have a physical form, right? They're basically ideas, right? So it's like the idea of you going to get something to eat. It doesn't have a physical form. The food you eat represents the, the idea that you had, but it's not the actual idea itself. And so when the cosmic entities want to take on a physical form, what they do is they travel to the dimension of manifestations and they meet with a being called Anthropomorpho. And what Anthropomorpho does is he gives them what's called an embody, basically a physical form they can, they can put their essence into and then appear. I mean, if things are bad enough, they can just will themselves a physical form, but more often than not, they go to the dimension of manifestations, at least according to the old Quasar stories from back in the early 1990s. But the important thing here is a place like the dimension of manifestations, a place like the far shore, right? So basically where the one above all resides, things like that. And then the negative zone, there's only ever one of them across the multiverse. So the thing about the negative zone is that it's basically a giant hallway of doors, right? So any universe can enter into the negative zone. So it's entirely possible that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that like some characters from the MCU could enter into the negative zone and then like Andrew Garfield happens to be there. Andrew Garfield is not from the, Mar the main Marvel Cinematic Universe, he's from his own universe, but his universe has access to the negative zone. How it is Andrew Garfield ended up there, I don't know. And then honestly, we probably wouldn't care. <laughs> We would just be ecstatic to see him again. But the, the negative zone itself houses like an entire universe, right? There's planets and there's solar systems and all kinds of stuff, but it's all basically ruled by Annihilus and the Annihilation Wave. Annihilus has what's called the Cosmic Control Rod. This is basically an artifact that allows him to manipulate cosmic energy. It is by all standards of measurement, the negative zone equivalent of the power cosmic or the power that Galactus has, which is actually how he was able to defeat Galactus during the Annihilation event. But the important thing here is is that when it comes to this place, the Annihilation Wave, as crazy as it sounds, is literally just a giant army of bugs. <laughs> I'm not even lying to you, right? It's just trillions upon trillions of bugs. And that may seem laughable, but when the Annihilation event took place and Annihilus and the entire Annihilation Wave basically broke out of the negative zone and invaded the main Marvel Universe, oh, it was nuts, all bets were off. Literally the story opened with like Star-Lord and Nova, Richard Ryder, who were leading like this United something front or whatever, I can't remember exactly what it was called. They were basically refugees. Like, like what they were doing is they were going from world to world and just trying to save people, gathering them up and just taking them back to like some place. They were basically just falling back. Is all of, they were just retreating, trying to like not die because the annihilation wave had just shown up in the universe and spread like a plague. Like they took out Galactus. I mean, just just it was it was absolutely bonkers, right? They actually started using Galactus as a source of power, but by all standards of measurement they would have won. The funny thing, and, and the reason why none of Earth's superheroes were there is because while Annihilation was going on, Civil War was happening. And there's actually a point where Richard Ryder Nova shows up on Earth and is like, 
What are you even doing? Like the universe is being consumed by an army of bugs and you're bickering over superhuman registration. <laughs> It was one of the funniest things. Like he shows up on earth and like Venom and like the Thunderbolts. I try to attack him. They're like, you're not registered. He was like, that's the least of your concerns right now. Right. But like he didn't have time to tell anybody what was going on. So we ultimately just had to like get out of there before they just snatched him up. Right. So, they, so literally he gets back to Star-Lord and he was like, so earth isn't going to help us. Right. Those numb skulls are bickering over superhuman registration. We're on our own. <laughs> now, eventually Galactus is freed and ultimately he ends up just annihilating the entire annihilation wave or at least so much of it that like the the events basically over and at that point it's cleanup duty but like the the threat of a nihilist is huge because what this would do is is with him being a nihilist right the belief that life is meaningless and that kind of a thing he would literally just kind of spread throughout the whole universe thanos blinking out half the life in the universe that was really more of an altruistic idea coming from a guy who was basically a dick is really all it was. I mean, Thanos, I mean, we can't, no one's gonna argue that, right? I mean, Thanos was was a dick, right? He was just like, I'm gonna blink out half the life in the universe. But his motivation for doing so, you could argue came from a good place. Annihilus is not coming from a good place. He's not like a misunderstood villain doing things for positive reasons, no. He wanted to destroy all life in the universe. <laughs> and he would have done it had they not rescued Galactus and Galactus just obliterated the annihilation wave. Like it's, it's that kind of a thing, right? This guy cannot be redeemed. There's no fixing him. There's no saving him. There's no getting him to become a good guy. If he allies with you, it's because there's something to be gained for like Annihilus and the annihilation wave. It's just one of those things. So again, I think it would be awesome to see him in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it would give us this gravitas, right? It would give us this idea beyond Kane the Conqueror anyway, that there are threats that exist out there in other dimensions that if they showed up in the MCU, all hell would break loose. We got a kind of taste of that when it came to Dormammu, but we don't know the full totality of what Dormammu's capable of. We know he's like really powerful, and we know the Dark Dimension is a result of him conquering some of the locales around him, but we don't know if the people in those locales were all powerless or anything like that. Our knowledge and understanding of the power of Dormammu comes from the Ancient One just being like, he's really powerful, and our knowledge in the comics. And that's it, right? We actually haven't seen him do anything, right? Nothing significant. I mean, it'd have been different if like during the events of Avengers Endgame, like all hell's breaking loose, like the Avengers are just getting crushed. There's nothing they can do. And then Dormammu shows up, snaps his fingers, the gauntlet vanishes, Thanos dies, and he's like, I'll catch y'all later, and then leaves. <laughs> It would have been different if it was something like that, right? Just giving us this just stupid display of power. But we don't really know exactly what it is that Ormamu is capable of. More so than that, outside of the cosmic control rod, Annihilus doesn't necessarily have to have that in order to be all powerful. It helped during the events of Annihilation, but we've seen him launch massive campaigns and he, he's conquered huge sections of the negative zone even before he had the cosmic control rod. And so when you compare something like that, right? A more tangible villain, even though he looks like a giant grasshopper to something like Dormammu, who's a Faltine, right? Just a being of pure magical energy. It would be a little more cool to see a nihilist because if you have someone who's just really capable that could just punch him to death, then like a nihilist would die. Like that would basically be it. But the sheer overwhelming force of the annihilation wave, the fact that like all these different superheroes that we could be introduced to over the MCU, right? All these characters that we didn't even know existed, Quasar and different things like that. Despite all their vaunted power, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, all that kind of stuff, there's nothing they can do in the face of the annihilation wave. And it's not because each of these insects all has reality warping powers, right? Or fly at super speed or something like that. It's because there's just so damn many of them, right? Just trillions upon trillions upon trillions of these things that all just descend onto the universe, right? It's, it's, it's like locusts descending onto your house, right? Like every locust in the world just descends onto your local neighborhood. What are you gonna do? There's nothing you can do, right? You just flee for your life. And that's basically it. So let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing somebody like Annihilus in the MCU. With, with Disney owning the Fox properties, the likelihood of us seeing him at some point in time is insanely high. The question is, would it be the Annihilation event? Would we basically see him showing up in the universe for the purpose of conquering it and almost succeeding, would we see that kind of thing take place? So with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Thank you all for watching. I will catch you all later. Peace.